if I said to somebody, okay, I think the Sega Saturn is worth buying now, um, uh, trying to <laughs> trying to convince someone to get a physical Sega Saturn collection is is a tough sell because the prices on the games are just not worth it. Some of the games that are worth buying um, are so astronomically large that it's, it's as good as I feel those games are. I can't recommend someone to part with their money for 250, 500. I've seen some games go for two grand on on a game that's 20 years old that I think is worth playing, and I don't think there's anything else like it, like your Burn Rangers, like your Knights, like your um, Panzer Dragoon, and things like that. Um, and I'd much rather say wait for a remake if you get it by the HD remaster if it's available. It's it's tough. It was tough for the longest time for me to say to someone, yeah, get get you, you need to get a Sega Saturn. Back 10, 15 years ago, that's all I was saying to people. You want to be a retro collector, you're missing out on the Sega Saturn. It's an exciting time to be a Sega Saturn fan. And I'll tell you why. Um, it's almost like having a new system. Even now. Let me explain what was happening with the Sega Saturn scene. In the UK, roughly about 200 games was released with the Sega Saturn. It came out in early 1995, I believe, and it was released early to try and get ahead of the PlayStation 1. Um, as a result of that, it, it, it had this domino effect to, that basically said people who were developing games were no longer launch games because they didn't have time to finish their games. The games that did come out were, were often not finished or looked a bit rough around the edges because they were rushed to the market. Um, the price was a lot higher than what it was for the PlayStation because they, they didn't need to rush. PlayStation didn't need to, but the Sega Saturn did. They decided because they were worried that it was going to be underpowered, that they put extra, um, extra hardware inside of the machine to try and make it better. It goes on, it goes on, it goes on. But basically, they, they, they stuffed it up. But one of the biggest problems that they did is the English-speaking countries got half the games um, that they should have because they thought well, RPGs aren't popular, so we won't bother translating them. Plus, they're expensive. Um, we'll leave those over there because people want fighting games and, and, and things of that nature. Even some of the fighting games never made it over to this country because someone decided that's not what's going to sell this console. And then about two and a half, three years into its life, Sega decided the Sega Saturn is not the future. The Dreamcast is. And they put all their eggs into the Dreamcast. So a lot of games that were developed for or going to be released for the Sega Saturn got cancelled and never got released. But they did in Japan. In Japan, the Sega Saturn was massive, really popular, but they never got translated. So I think there was something like a thousand games in Japan. And just, just, you know, just digest that for a second. The Sega Saturn had 200 games in the UK, most of them were sports titles, from what I can tell, um, or, or what they thought the Europe European market wanted. Um, but Japan got a thousand titles. Now, I'm not saying they were all great, but they got a thousand titles. There's a big difference there. So this is what's happening. People, the, the general public, the fans of the Sega Saturn, are taking games that never got released outside of Japan, translating them, and almost giving them a re-release -re now. Um, and that's exciting for me. There's loads of RPGs and fighting games that were never released over here that you can now have access to because someone's actually gone in, translated them, and released them. So here's my Sega Saturn here. And I've got my Pseudo Saturn in the back there. So now that allows me to play Japanese games, uh, American games, and UK games, not just the UK ones. So I can experience these games that have now only just been released for the Sega Saturn. And I'll just get the cartridge up so you can have a closer look. So that's that's what it is. Um, that's probably the most expensive bit of kit you'll buy for the Saturn outside getting the machine itself. They're probably about 50 quid each. So you can get that and the Sega Saturn, plug it in, and then anything you want to play, whether it's a reproduction or whether it's a Japanese release or whatever, the, the system is unlocked for you to be able to do that. What you're looking at there is the newest model of the Pseudo Saturn. Before, it would just open up your, your, your Sega Saturn, that would be it. You'd, you'd be slave to saving things on the internal memory, which if anybody knows anything about the Sega Saturn is awful, because it uses a lithium battery that runs out one, every three years, and if it doesn't give you any warning that the battery's running out, if it does run out, um, you lose all your game saves. So, uh, and the, the cartridge slot in the back of the Saturn is notorious for being, um, what shall we say, a lot of these cartridges, they don't, they haven't quite got the dimensions right, so you can damage the chipboards in the back of them if you keep taking things out and putting things into that cartridge slot at the back here. 
So this this here, you, if you keep keep taking that out and putting that back in, you you you, you can damage your Saturn. But this newest module of the Pseudo Saturn basically has three features. On the top of it, there's a switch that you can switch from side to uh, side when it's off. That will switch between um, action replay and backup memory in one. So you can now save to the cartridge memory, so you don't have to worry about the internal one. And also the RAM. So there's certain uh, games that needed a um, extra RAM to run, um, and that's all in one now on the Pseudo Saturn. So now this this has not been out very long. And it's a better time than ever to try and get one of these things if you wanted to get a Sega Saturn with all of his bells and whistles. Right, so um, another issue I hear, it says, all right, yeah, Bill, whatever. I can get these reproduction things, but they're just, they'll just look ugly. They're just loads of plain discs. Um, but I want to talk about this chap. So that's the, that's the Pseudo Saturn. A nice bit of kit for that. But I want to talk about this guy. Uh, Palfic Designs, he's called. That's his Instagram account. Um, and I want to I want to shout out for him. The guy's called Jonathan. Um, he is someone I con uh, contacted on Instagram. And for me, who likes to have that, you know, I'm not I'm not going to hide from it. I like big displays. I like to have all my games on one place in a nice way. Um, he, I, I didn't want all these ugly cases and boxes for games that I got for my pseudo Saturn. I wanted them to look good. And he has done. Uh, some amazing stuff for the games that were never released. So again, let me paint the landscape. Um, let's talk about uh, Secura Wars, right? So this here. This game was never released in this country. Uh, it was never released outside of Japan. So a fan has gone out and translated the game, released the, the code online for you to basically download and put into your pseudo Saturn if you burn it to disk. But what um, Jonathan has here from Plafic Design um, is he has actually created the box to look like it was released in the UK. So he's gone out, he's found artwork all by himself, he's designed the case front and back. So I'll just turn that around so you can have a decent look at it. He's designed the case front and back, um, he's put in the descriptions on it, he has uh, put in like the you know the, the long box thing. If you bought this in Japan, you would have, because uh, they didn't actually release these long back boxes in Japan. They had like these CD cases. They came in CD cases. Um, I ain't got one thing to hand. Wait, wait a second. Don't go anywhere. Let me. Exp this is going to be embarrassing. I'm just going to pick up the first CD that's off the shelf, and I guarantee it's not going to be a good one. WWE the Aggression CD. There we go. So they they basically. One pound from CDX, apparently. Sega Saturn games in Japan came in this kind of case, so everything was this sort of size. So you can imagine having that on my shelf next to all my other Sega Saturn games, which are these long box designs. It looks a bit odd. So he designs them um, to make them look like they're released in the UK. But not only that, is when you buy them from him, he, he doesn't do the instruction manuals, which is is shame because they're expensive. But he also makes the discs look like they were released in the UK. Um, so this was this this came out like last year, a brand new RPG for a system that came out in 1995. Stopped them really making games in 98, 97. A brand new RPG, fully translated in the UK, uh, in, into English, released in the UK with a box. It's like I've got a brand new system with games still coming out today. I love it. Um, and there's and what I'm going to do now is just show off some of Jonathan's work. Um, you can go follow him on Instagram if you're into this thing. He's now getting into the world of doing um, Dreamcast, because Dreamcast is the same. There's loads of games on the Dreamcast that were never released. Um, and even if you're not going to buy his stuff, if you just look at some of this catalogue, and every so often he just does a new design and releases it on his Instagram, and you can go, wow, that looks awesome. And this this is not just a case of getting the Japanese design, and then just slapping it on the box because like as you said not only would it have to be stretched because that's how the size of the Japanese cases this is something he's designed himself in Photoshop and things like that to make it work on this big box so yeah just go go follow him on Instagram say Bill sent you if you want um, look at some of his work he is gonna go on to making switch games as well not necessarily release the cartridge but just the inlays so if you've got loads of digital games and you maybe you're you're a bit funny like me and you kind of want all the boxes on the shelf for all your digital games and they've never had a physical release you could go and spend hundreds of pounds for limited run games that someone's decided to scalp or you could pay 
40, 50 quid for a game from limited run games if you're lucky enough. Uh, when when and if they decide to release them or you can get someone like Jonathan from Plathic Design to sort of give him a shout and say do you mind making this for me and chuck him I mean I, I paid about 12 quid for that um, for secure for secure wars 12 15 pounds I think it was um, and and you know he he's this is what he does as a hobby so don't expect him to sort of send it through the post like Amazon and get it next day but um, his communication is really good we talk often He's a top bloke, um, and yeah, he he can make these things for you, um, and you could have a, an affordable physical game collection for the Sega Saturn, or just something that you want to display somewhere in your house. Right, let's have a look through some of the games. So the, this is the, um, I, as you know, I like my uh, bullet hell shmup games. Uh, this is Salamander, the collection. Um, again, the the if you look up Salamander. Um, on the on the Sega Saturn, you will see it's a small case. In fact, I can show you because I actually bought this one. So that's that's the actual original box. Uh, what they did, the, the instruction manual always ser also served on the. Uh, so this is an official Japanese release that I bought on on uh, on eBay. Uh, the Japanese one, the front case is basically a, the instruction manual. They slip this into the 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 CD jewel case, and that's your front cover. So you can't get anything that looks like this. Now what Jonathan did for me is, uh, oops, dropping my discs. What Jonathan did for me is he basically said, geez, there's no, there's no artwork for this game that's like th that size. The, even the logo is, is difficult to find. And if you look up Salamander uh, Konami and you look at the different art, the, the art is really difficult to get hold of. It's very, you know, it's an old game. So there's the resolutions poor. And things of that nature. So what he actually did is, uh, he says one of the cha most challenging things he did. Um, he actually went and said, you know what, I'm going to get this done. So he went and re-found the artwork and cut around everything to make it fit on a UK box. And I'm so chuffed with this because, you, as you know, if you watch Critical here, I love Salamander. Um, he actually has basically redone it, found the, f I don't know if he designed his own fonts or redone it. He's basically made it look perfect. Um, he he's basically make it look so good, and I'm so chuffed that I can basically look have that on my shelf and go. I've got Salamander the collection on Sega Saturn, and it looks gorgeous. Um, even the back, look at that. It looks so good. It looks better than anything they've released officially. You know the screenshots, the information that's on the back. Um, you know it, it it is really 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 good, uh, and. This is the official disc. So this is the Japanese disc that I had when it was this jewel case and its jewel case. This is the disc that Jonathan made for me. So even his disc art is is unique. Um, it's a lovely collector's piece as far as I'm concerned. It just looks really, really good. And I'm so chuffed that he put so much detail, love and effort into this. That he deserves. It, it, this is why I had his own segment on bonus stage because he puts so much effort into what he makes. It's just look at it, gorgeous. I've got Salamander that was only released in Japan, a UK release for it on the Sega Saturn, and it looks perfect on my shelf. Looks so good. Uh, th th this, this is his Radiant Silver Gun. And I've never even seen this artwork before for Radiant Silver Gun. It looks so good. It just looks awesome. The fact that he's just made it, you know, he's fa I don't know if he's found the artwork. He must have found it from somewhere. I don't know. I don't know what he does, but he's managed to find it and he's managed to make it look better than what the, the original would look like. I really like this uh, bullet hell game, Shinryu. Not only come up with his own text, which looks pretty cool, but he's managed to cut out all of the Japanese text from the front to actually fully expose the uh, great boss design. For this game and use it as the front cover on there so that's really cool and again the, the the game this game never had back artwork because it's not how the japanese released their games so he's gone and created them um for got my face in there but yeah he's basically gone and, and taken screenshots from the game he's given it his own description based off if it was released in the uk um and also got background artwork to make it look better than anything it normally did on the saturn anyway so 
great, great stuff. He's actually gone and um, created his own front cover for that. So I haven't, I haven't got it here. But if you just search on Google for, I'll, I'll put it in the in the recut. If you search for Guardian Force on Sega Saturn and look at the front cover, it's literally just a picture of a tank. Um, whereas he's gone and found, found I don't know, if, I think this is from the review um, book. So, so the magazines that reviewed the game in Japan, they got they got given more artwork that has probably been lost now um, to the magazines to say, look, if you're going to advertise our game in your magazine, here's some artwork for the game to sort of make it look good. He's found that artwork that has been lost to time, and he's used it for the artwork for the front cover of this. Um, and what what is actually a really good bullet hell game, um, he's made it look more attractive. If these cases came out in the UK and they looked this good, this game would have sold. <laughs> This game would have looked so much better, and I think it just goes to show it's a lost art these days for, for art, for, for front covers. It was so important to have good box art when you released a game. Um, and and if, if Jonathan had that job and he was putting things on the shelf that looked this good, I think that would help help your sales considerably. So Magic Knight Ray Earth. Um, again, only available on Sega Saturn. RPG that you cannot get on any other platform. Is is a bit like Zelda, uh, the over-the-top Zelda games, you know, like uh, Minish Cap and the original Zeldas. Uh, but you have three playable characters that you could switch between that all have different magic abilities based on the um, anime. Um, and the funny thing about this is that the t the team that made this, what the yeah, Working Designs. There was a a team in America called Working Designs that were hell bent on um, translating themselves some of the Japanese. RPGs and moving them to the to the US and they worked on Magic Knight Ray Earth and it was one of the ones they had the most trouble in translating and it was in release for a long time and it actually got released in America um, and it's one of those games which is ridiculously priced I I was looking to try and comp to spread out my Saturn collection and get closer to what more of those a thousand games that I missed out on because I only had 200 to choose from um, and this was one that kept coming up on people's lists. Like, give it if you can get it, get, give it a try because it's actually quite good. Trying to get hold of the game in America, you're going to be paying stupid amounts of money, and I don't even know if it's going to be a good game or going to be worth it. So I, I, I do without. Jonathan managed to not only um, re oh, sorry, the reverse of the box, not only sort of make it it's affordable to me, so I have to pay something like because I think it's like six hundred pounds to get this because it wasn't it was the last game that. Uh, working designs released on the Sega Saturn, and it was the last game that came out in the US um, on the Sega Saturn before it died. Uh, so all of these things contribute to the game being a lot more expensive than at what it truly is, because it's a desirable product. It was a game that no, very few copies were made. Um, it's the last game on the Sega Saturn, which makes it come up more often in the conversation. Pizza people want it, um, and it's the, a game that Working Designs slaved over to try and translate from Japan when no one else asked for it and they did it. So it's expensive but this is 15 quid. I paid Jonathan 15 quid, he made me a box that looks better than what the um, the American one looks like and again he's got his own custom um, disc artwork uh, which is really shiny and very difficult to see. Who is this guy? He's Jonathan from Plafic Design. He makes reproduction um, Sega Saturn games. He's going things on Dreamcast as well, and he's going to do some inlays for um, for Switch. I'm just giving him a shout out because I think he's done some great work. Elevator Action is, is another game I'll play on the show at some point as well. Uh, again, only released in Japan. Um, I think. Well, actually, is there any release in Japan? It might. There might be a UK release. No, no. This is definitely only released in Japan. Again, the artwork was squashed into that kind of CD case style. He's managed to explode it and, sh and show it. This is a fun uh, running gun arcade shooter multiplayer game. One of the best multiplayer games on the Sega Saturn. And again, he's managed to capture the uh, the arcade look, which was basically that. What you see there is what you'd normally get on the arcade machine. Um, he translated it into uh, the Sega Saturn box. Deep Fear. Got a story on this one. So this is Deep Fear. I'll just cover that for um, Fanatic because he's too too young for this stuff. This game was released in the UK. Um, so this is one of the exceptions to the rule that I was just mentioning. A um, little bit of history. So Resident Evil came out for the Sega Saturn about six to eight months after um, the PlayStation 1 release. And it wasn't as good. 
It had more features, but the graphics weren't as good. Capcom for the longest time was hinting that Resident Evil 2 would come to the Sega Saturn in the same style. Less less graphics, but more features. And would be more of a, a you know a different take. And and the Saturn Sega Saturn community for years around about 95 to 97 were hanging on for Capcom to release this massive game, Resident Evil 2, and it never came. So as a result of that, Sega made their own version of this kind of style called in this game called Deep Fear, which basically is um, Resident Evil Underwater, where it, it might as well be a Resident Evil game, but you are in an underwater base, um, and you, you have to solve puzzles, you have to shoot kind of twisted Davy Jones from Pirates of the Caribbean like monsters. Um, and that's actually really good. As I actually really enjoy it. If if you want Resin, if you thought Resident Evil 2 was too different to Resident Evil 1, and you wanted like Resident Evil 1.5, this is the this is the game for you. And again, only released on the Sega Saturn. You cannot get it on anything else. Um, and the game itself will probably never get an HD remake. It will be a series that they'll Sega will never release again because it didn't sell very well. Um, and it's, it's just, it's like I say, if you like Resident Evil 1 and you like all that cheesiness, it's it's worth trying out. Now, it was released in the UK, but again, it's probably the last game that was released in the UK for the Sega Saturn. So not many of them done. The front cover, uh, I think I've got it here, because I think, yeah. Uh, let's dig out some of these paperwork that I keep hold of, and I have no idea why. Now, the Japanese release is actually fully playable. Because although it's not translated, everything is spoken, so you can actually play the Japanese release, and that's why I own it. So I, I bought the Japanese version, played through the game, really enjoyed it. Uh, you can get through most of it. There's Japanese text that comes up, and I think there's one puzzle that that causes problems with because you can't understand what they're saying. But you know, a little guide, and you got got around it. Uh, it allowed it. I, I got the Japanese release, and I was happy. If I got the UK release, I'd have to pay two to five hundred pounds. I think it might even be worth more now. And it's ridiculous, um, and it, it's not worth that. It's it's an, it's good to, as a curiosity to play. Yeah, it's good to sort of check out and go. Okay, I've not. I want to see what Resident Evil 1.5 is like. The Sega take on it because they weren't going to get Resident Evil 2, so they made their own Resident Evil game, which is actually quite fun. Um, but you'd have to pay an arm and a leg for these people that have bought the game. Keep keep it locked away, and if anyone's willing to pay for it, um, then great. If not, they'll keep it there. It'll get rarer and rarer and rarer. The price will go up and up and up, and you'll never get the chance to actually play it. Um, or you can go to this guy, and he will make you one. And the front cover looks better, because he's actually done it himself. Um, that's more traditional what the back cover looks like anyway. But he's he's got his own design for it, um, and uh, you, not only do you get a English version of the game in the UK looking box, but it's got a better front cover, and you get to experience a game at, which is a footnote in history that will never ever get remade. I, I, I swear, there, there's games on the Saturn that have more chance, and this will be one of them that you won't be able to get on and, and play on anything else. You'll be able to actually get a copy from from Jonathan from Plastic Design and actually experience it, and not have to pay silly prices to actually get a, a taster of a, of a game. So yeah, that that this is the reason I think that this is important. I saw that in magazines for the Sega Saturn for years. Uh, me and my friend Dragan would see it in Sega Saturn magazine. It's coming over to the UK. They're going to release it. They're going to release it. Never happened. Capcom never, or whoever was responsible, never actually released it over here. But we saw the artwork for this game everywhere, and we were we were chomping at the bit because we loved Capcom fighters, and this was going to be the definitive version of Darkstalkers. They had night, they had um, Night Warriors, and all these other games, but this had the full roster, um, four megabyte support RAM, and all that kind of stuff. It was going to be the tits, basically, as as Dragon would say, it'd be the tits. Uh, we loved it. We li literally looked at um, the, we we looked at the magazines all the time for this, and that's the original original artwork for it. Now you can actually, I've I've actually got the Japanese release um, for the game. There's the, the there's Jonathan's version, and there's the Japanese release disc. Um, because once you've got, <laughs> it's really weird. Once you played through arcade mode once, you can actually set it to English, so it's actually like a full English review. So it's fair enough. But still, you would get if you bought it you would get that kind of size case, unlike the others that fit on yourself. Whereas with um, Jonathan's design, this is his. Um, I've never seen, again, the artwork for that before. 
with the whole cast, not just a portion of them, the whole cast from the game. Um, and he's also included the, what would have been, I believe, the UK name for it, which I didn't know about, called Jedda's Damnation. I didn't even know it was going to call Darkstalk was Jedda's Damnation. Sticking with 2D fighters from Capcom, Cyberbots is a gorgeous looking uh, 2D fighter. Massive mechs fighting each other. He's very open to suggestions. So I said to him, it's a bit of a shame when you open these boxes and you don't have a manual in them, it's just kind of empty. You know, if I show you here. Basically, you open it up and you just get that. So this, this, this is a shame that your product doesn't do that. He actually said, well, does that look better? So he actually did another print of the artwork and stuck it in the box for me and said, is, is that better? And I actually like that and I think you should do it more. Uh, again, anybody who knows anything about the Sega Saturn, this is the most expensive bullet hell game on the Sega Saturn. It's good. Uh, basically, you are a mech with a giant gun that can turn into a spaceship and then turn back again. Um, so you've got like a, a transition thing that gives you different uh, maneuverability if you're in the ship but you have less firepower, if you change the mech you have more firepower but you can't move as quick and you're a bigger target. Uh, it's a very, very um, good idea. It's not the best um, beat bullet hell on the platform, it's good but it's not the best and it certainly isn't worth the, f I, I, I want to say thousands, I don't know for certain, but it certainly isn't worth the price to get a, a, a proper version of this game. And it would not be on my shelf if it wasn't for this guy making the making the game for me. So not, again, it, not only has he made the box long, so that to fit the long log box version, he's designed his own back cover, which is hell of a more impressive. So that's more, like you say for now, that's more what the front cover would have looked like if it came in the UK. The back cover, because there is no such thing, he's made his own, and I just think that looks awesome for a full of bullet hell game. That looks so, so good. What happened with this ga game is, as I followed Plathic Designs, he was releasing these cases as they go, and every so often he'll just go, this is my new case. And I was like, what's that? I've not seen that before. And he says, oh yeah, this is a really good shmup game. And I was like, awesome, I want it. So he's almost like the shopkeeper, like the the, the out, back in the days where you used to go into the retail shops and the brand new game came in and said, have you seen this brand new game? He would come across them, people have asked him to make games for him or he's liked them himself and made a case for himself for his collection. I followed him, this game popped up on his Instagram and I went, I'm ordering that, I don't know what it is. Looked up, found out some reviews on YouTube and things like that and said, yep, I'll, I'll order that please, I'll have that. So X-Men vs Street Fighter. Uh, he's made it look more like the comic book design one. So the 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 PlayStation version, I think, it was just a logo on the front cover. But he's actually taken the artwork from the game and sort of bended it around the case to make it look like a comic, like the comic book strip from the arcade. So really chuffed with that. Right, this was one of the more really recent releases, Castlevania Symphony of the Night. That's Jonathan's front cover. Again, artwork for Symphony of the Night I've never seen. So yeah, okay, some people might like the traditional looking artwork, but for me I've got something unique, something that no one else has got. Um, and it is a great game, and I'm looking forward to playing the Saturn version and seeing what the differences are. There's the back cover, which I think he's done a fantastic job on that um, back cover. Again, artwork I've not seen for Symphony of the Night before. A style! Uh, this will be one I play on stream at some point. Is a really colourful and with, with some great music. Uh, 2D, 2D uh, platformer game. If it came out nowadays as an indie game, it would do really well. Um, but it's just because it was a launch game on a 3D console, what, when everyone's going crazy for 3D, that people just um, didn't care for it. But that's Jonathan's case. So he's taken that's this picture here is basically what the front cover was, with that kind of gremlin look in the face, and that was just blank with a style written in very basic text, if I remember correctly. So he's he's added his own twist on on the case and done his own um, so he's, he's sort of made uh, his own variation of a style now again if that was on the shelf like that you'd, you'd probably pick it up and give it a give it a look but the game itself if you've not ever, ever heard of a style it's beautifully rendered um, it's got some gorgeous 2d pixels and it, it really shows off what the Sega Saturn could do with 2d graphics you've seen this on critical hit um, which is the review show that I do this is a really cute platform game um, where you play as a taxi, a cartoon taxi racing around the United States at fast pace. And it's pretty good, pretty good. And again, never got a um, a English speaking release. Um, 
is only released in Japan. Very, very rare. Very expensive. But he's gone and made a UK box release, stretch box version. Um, and it's got a really nice back cover as well, I thought. The disc is particularly nice on this one too. I think this is the latest translation project uh, on, on the Sega Saturn. Vandal Hearts. Um, now, Sarah, this is one of her favourite RPGs growing up. You know when you get bought a RPG um, and you play it and you think, oh god, this is amazing, they've got like, the story they're covering and things like that. And most people got Final Fantasy VII, but every so often you get bought an RPG or something that only you played and not many people know about. This was Sarah's. I'd never heard of Vandal Hearts. It might be bigger than what I realised. Um, but she played it and she loved the story and played it and I got it for her recently. So, um, I didn't realise that there was actually a Sega Saturn release for it. Um, and <laughs> she's heard me. She's jumped in the chat. She's she's lurking and she just heard me. I didn't realise there was a Sega Saturn release for it. So, I, I you know, I kind of saw Sarah playing it. I thought, oh, yeah, that's interesting. And she just thought played it. But it got translated, the Japanese version of Vandal Hearts for Sega Saturn got translated and released on it. I don't know if it's better. I don't know what they've changed. But I'm curious to find out. And, and actually try it. Um, and again, this is this is artwork I've not seen for the game because the artwork traditionally for the front cover uh, was a bit more. Well, it's not that, but it's a bit more like this. Um, Sarah, if you're there, if you want to come show off Vandal Hearts on the PlayStation that we've got it, you feel free to run in and come and do that. Here she comes. <laughs> so that's that's the PlayStation <laughs> release of one of my, of one Sarah's favourite. Uh, RPGs. So again, big difference. Um, if you if you if you're going to be lazy and and make a front cover for the Sega Saturn version, you would probably go and just copy that, and maybe stretch it, or maybe uh, just leave the top or bottom blank. But was, it's not an easy job. But he's gone out and found artwork for the game, which was used for the magazines, I believe, to advertise the game. Artwork that's probably been lost for years. He's managed to find and track something down, and actually use it for the front cover. He's done a lot of detail on the back as well, which looks really, really awesome. But yeah, I'll be trying that out, seeing what the difference is, is between this and the um, and the PlayStation version, if there is any. And um, I that's one of the things I love about the Sega Saturn that is still happening today. Games that were never released in this country, versions that are on the PlayStation that I'll be able to see the differences between, and also games that had never been released before. Um, classics that you know, are only on the system and not gonna not gonna appear or be re-released. Versions of games that were on the PlayStation, but I'm curious to see what the differences are between them. Um, as well as strange games, you know, that are ex stupidly expensive to get hold of that that get brought to my attention. I, all of this I get from being a Sega Saturn fan, following Plafik Designs on Instagram, and he just raises, you know, he raises those points up and sort of. Just interesting to see what he does in his spare time. Like I said, he's not a shop. He's not a retailer. So he's just a guy. He's got a hobby. And we've got both share a love for Sega Saturn. So don't go out, don't go to him if you are into this kind of stuff. And just sort of say, can I can I order this? And why has it been delivered? Because um, just, he just does it in his spare time. But if you want to have a chat about Sega Saturn. Or have a look at his catalogue of stuff. It's all there. Go check him out there. I, hope, I think, Jonathan, if you're listening... You've done some amazing work here, and I'm so proud to look at my Sega Saturn shelf now and see some of the unique pieces of art that you've, because that's what I believe it is, that you've created for my shelf. Uh, and I thank you so much for the time and effort you put in to create these. And I know I've given you another list <laughs> of games I really want to see, and I, and I will hopefully get those trickled to me when you find time. But I just, I appreciate uh, what you've done. They're worth every penny that I give you. Um, to get these uh, games produced for me and sort of reproduce. And thank you for people like yourself who have this option to allow me to play more games on the Sega Saturn that I would never have a chance to play on anything else because they're too expensive or they're not translated or whatever. But not only do I get to experience them, but I also have to get them on the shelf next to my other Sega Saturn games that I've got because I've got pretty much the whole collection that I want for Sega Saturn UK releases. And you're keeping one of my favourite consoles of all time alive through the, through the stuff that you do. So thank you so much, and uh, I look forward to the next batch of games when and if you get round to doing them. Um, but yeah, you, you are amazing. You're a legend, and uh, this, is, this is my uh, appreciation for your work. Keep it up.
Thank you very much, my friend. Thank you, Shiro. Then. Sega to Sanshiro. Sega to Sanshiro. Sega to Sanshiro. Sega to Sanshiro.